Normally when I would prepare for a school visit, first of all, we would generally start off with a phone call. The school would ring me and we'll discuss what activity will take place on the day. Then I normally would send some information about what I'm going to do, such as a handout detailing some little bit of background information, that type of thing. She came out here and we would have discussed with her where the project was going, what we wanted from the project in terms of um, what, the, what skills the children would learn, how we would impart the skills to parents and, um, and basically Betsy was, had all the knowledge really in, in helping us out with that. I have loads and loads of bulbs to plant. Do you know what they are? Yeah, I yeah. know what they are. Would this be one here? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What might this be? It's a bulb, yeah. It's a daffodil bulb, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And did your teacher show you one of these? Yeah. yeah. Well, I prepared my, um, the children in my class by when I heard this specialist was going to be coming in, we did a kind of focus a lot more on SCSC and especially the geography and teaching them about the natural environment. Yeah, so a bulb is a coat like you'd have a coat to keep it warm when it's in the ground. And to stop little things like what might like worms eating it or something that might be in the soil. Yeah. So it has, it has its coat to keep it nice and safe. In here, coming out of this bulb, yeah, is going to be a flower next spring. All tidied in this little package. It will come yellow. Wait till I see, can I cut it? Oops, I better not cut my fingers, had I? And that's where your flower is going to come from, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. On the top, yeah, that's it. Up here. Finger, up, there. up there. So yeah. Really it will. And what's going to come from the bottom part? No, the stem. No, the stem comes from the top part. They hold it in the ground. It begins with R. Roots. 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 Well done. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. And did your teacher show you one of these? Yeah. Yeah. So you, I have loads and loads of these out in the tunnel, and I need someone to help me. So we'll go out in a little while and plant them, will we? Well, I found very much my role today was I really kind of had to, compared to in the classroom, I had to take a step back and just let them kind of figure it out for themselves. I think children, as a rule, like to get their hands dirty and they're quite happy to be out there, you know, mixing with the compost or messing with the soil. Um, you know, they like to show each other that their hands are dirty and my hands are dirtier than yours. Oh, yours are pretty good as well. Oh, that's it. Break up those lumps. That's excellent. Yeah. Everyone got a pot. A little bit of compost in the pot. Look about this much. Look. Yeah. Just up to here. See? Just to about there, okay? Just a little bit. Yeah. And make it all nice and make sure it's all nice and soft, yeah? Now. Everybody got some in their pots, not too much. We'll just take a touch Because we, we have to put the bulb in first and then we'll fill it up, yeah? No, is that that's, okay, oh, that's perfect. Easy. Excellent. No. So I would think there's a, quite a lot, a wide range of learning goes on during a lesson. So we'd both be inside in the classroom and when we go outside. You know, we would be exploring different aspects of plants or the garden. Um, we'll be trying maybe to solve some problems before we'd go out or while we're out there, like how tall something grows or how deep should it be planted so we look at all of those type of things well I think when from a difference between taking the younger and the older classes out generally the younger ones may need some more help they may need help putting on their jackets or to get their sleeves rolled up sometimes they are reluctant to make contact with the compost or with plants whatever we're working with so you might need to guide them a little bit more that way aren't they pretty yeah, yeah I think they're real pretty these are called what are they called? Yeah. Tulips. You're excellent. Well done. You're very good. That's excellent. Yeah. You want that colour, do you? Okay. Well, we have yellow and we have red. And so we can choose a colour, yeah? So everyone got a bulb? Everyone got one? Can you hold it up till I see it? Yeah, everyone hold up their bulb really high. That's it. Everyone got their tulip up? Okay. Now, are you watching? Look at the lady. Now, remember which bit goes down? That, the bottom. The bottom. Yeah. I have to be, do you know what, when you have it filled in, do you know what I want you to do? 
nice and gentle. Be really gentle like this, yeah? Yeah? Well, you tap it down really gently like this, look. Really gently. We give them a little bit more like this, yeah? Sure, look. I'll get my pen and I'll give you a come help. That's beautiful now. That's perfect, isn't it? That's excellent. Now, a little bit now. 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 Are we all done? Well, I must say, that was fantastic. And thank you for your, all your help. I've brought you in an example of what we're going to do when we go out. This is what we're going to work with. This is our cutting. Yeah, it's very simple what we're going to do. So that's our plant. These are the buds or what we call the node as well. Do you remember? Yeah. yeah. Initially, I would show whatever the task is that we're going to do and... It would demonstrate and after that as much as possible I try to stand back if it, if it is at all possible and let it happen to a large extent on its own. Um, again it, you know, today now with working with the secateurs we needed to be a bit more hands-on just for safety purposes. Hold your hand on the secateurs like this and then squeeze. So you open your knife a little bit and we're going to give it a wound and we wound it because it helps make the roots grow. And it's like when you cut yourself and you get a scab afterwards when you cut yourself and your scab forms. That's where the roots come out of. Like that. And again, hold the knife away from you. Yeah. So you make this fairly firm, okay? Not too hard. And it's very simple. All you have to do is shove your cutting right down. Yeah, I would see my, my, my role would be to encourage the children as well to, to, to do as much as possible of the task themselves and to make sure that everyone gets a go with everything. That, you know, that no child is actually left out. The lesson itself outside is uh, extremely active. The children are getting involved the whole time. Um, they're having to work in teams. They're having to, they're having to analyze, they're having to problem solve. The older ones sometimes can be a little bit more of a challenge in some ways, insofar as they might be a little bit harder to discipline. You know, you might have to you know, be after them a little bit, um, especially today now when we were yeah. using the sharp You're watching lads. Whoops. <laughs> So if you're, imagine you're a little root and you're trying to grow out and you hit this big lump, it'll be very hard for you to go through it. Look how hard it is. And a root isn't much stronger than your hair. So if you make, get rid of all the lumps as best you can, okay? So mix them up like that. Yeah, so get your hands into it. But well, generally before we start and if we're using any specialised tools or anything, I would show them what they are and make sure they know how to handle them properly. Like today with the secretaries, for instance, that they know that they're to be careful using it. We've lots of different kinds of secretaries, so be careful with them. That's it. Squeeze. Brilliant. Now you have to do what next? Cut it at the slant at the top. That's it. And again, call the secretaries how far away? At least, yes, a good bit away. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Remember? You won't get the roots at the top, so don't cut the bud. Uh, yeah, that's it. Very slim sliver, that's the word. That's good, you know, because we'll be able to put all these things in the garden next year. So you can come back and have a look at them in, 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 when you when you're go back to secondary school. Or you can come back in 10 years' time and have a look and see what, what plant you had, that, how well it grew. Okay. Well, it's, their attitude is really improved because you're giving them huge um, independence, really, in this kind of work. They have to work possibly as pairs or in a team because they're probably sharing some of the equipment, like the secateurs or whatever it is. They have to take turns. They're learning an awful lot about life skills and how to work with people, um, which is really, really very valuable in this day and age. Well, I guess some of the main benefits, I would think anyway, when children actually get out into nature is that it's easier to study nature when you're out and about, when you're actually in nature itself, rather than in solely in the classroom. And in the classroom afterwards is really good to reinforce what, they would, what children would learn while they're out. I found that my class brought in from the art even straight away, they were talking about what they did and how much they enjoyed it. And it's like they almost have this newfound love for nature. 
I think it's important that heritage specialists visit schools because it allows the children to work in a less formal atmosphere sometimes and they get to interact with each other maybe and do group activities. Um, they can have fun, they get out and about and they're actually involved in what they're doing and also it can help them remember when you actually do something yourself rather than reading it, you actually, it's easier, much easier to remember it.